Today on Sledhead 24-7, we head to West Yellowstone, Montana for a special edition episode, Snowshoot 2015. Mac Fish and the Sledhead 24-7 athletes test ride and evaluate four classes of snowmobiles from every OEM. Find out what we award best in class. Sledhead 24-7 starts now. Check out this view. And I don't mean just back there, right across here, Fish. We've got hardware. We've got the best of the best. We got a little bit of everything from all the manufacturers. We're in West Yellowstone, Montana for Snowshoot 2015 and Fish, to me, this is the ultimate snowmobile fantasy. It is, because all four major OEMs are here and they have sleds for us to ride from utility to mountain and everything in between. Think about that, every snowmobile made by every manufacturer for next year is here and we get to test them. That's right, Mac, myself and our Sledhead 24-7 athletes are gonna ride them, test them, evaluate them and give you an unbiased opinion on what they do and don't. Only one thing left to do, let's get to it. My definition of groom trail is getting out there on the you know, ultimate flattest of the flattest, following right behind the groomer. You know, maybe a few chatter bumps here and there because there's always something that you know, may or may not get smoothed out. But basically, I mean, it's just the ultimate, you know, fast paced winding turns, you know, big sweepers, kind of a high speed trail run. Yamaha Viper LTX SE, definitely the best Yamaha I've driven to date on a groom trail. Yamaha has done a really good job on getting that thing working well. Whether you're coming out of a corner, laying it to the bar, trying to catch up to the guy in front of you, or if you're the guy in front, you know, and using that power to pull away from the guy behind you. The motor is definitely something that's super key with that Yamaha chassis. On the Yamaha, I love the throttle response. If you can take it to the bar, you're going to get going very fast, very quickly. With the Fox Float 3s on it, the thing is just, it laid flat, and if you do need to make a change, you want to soften it, stiffen it, a couple pumps of an air pump is all it takes. Remember, it's groomed trail. You want to plant your butt on a seat, you want to be comfortable, and you want to put on a whole bunch of miles. Arctic Cats ZR7000 Snow Pro. I mean, it's really a fun sled to ride. We have one in our own Sledhead 24-7 fleet, and I've been personally been putting on quite a few miles on it. Although the Arctic Cat and the Yamaha share several features, Articat's borrowing the motor from Yamaha. Yamaha's borrowing the chassis from Articat. The one thing that I did notice with the Cat is that they have their own fueling and they have their own clutching. The clutching definitely felt like it hit way harder out here in the West. Now, that's a little bit subjective because, you know, they're obviously set up in different places and they may not be set up directly for here and that's something that can also be changed by the end user. But for today, the Articat definitely pulled a little bit harder off the bottom end had the Fox Float 3s up in the front. Really worked well, sucked up the bumps. They're easily adjustable. Comes with a little air pump right in the back trunk. You can let a little air out, soften it up, pump it up a couple times, bump up the pressure. Very easily adjustable. I definitely had to use more body language on this one. It pushed in the corners and I had to really throw my butt over and try and counteract that, that action. So it was a little bit more work. Kidu GSX SE with the 800 RE Tech. This snowmobile is really, really plush. I mean, this sled really isn't, you know, what does it come with? It's more of what doesn't it come with. Kind of like Skidoo's little secret, because a lot of people look at this machine, it looks like something that, you know, dad or grandpa would ride, but you gotta remember, it's got the 800 E Tech in it. You have a great front end on the thing. It's nice and wide, stays super planted in the corners. The rear suspension is air ride controlled, and it's air ride controlled on the fly. 
So if you're going through two foot chop, really just banging it out in the straights, you can adjust it, you know, to keep that front end nice and light. Or if you're going through, you know, 18 inch to one foot chop, you know, weaving through the corners, you can adjust that suspension still without even getting off the sled. The 800 Rush Pro S for me was one of the funnest sleds that I've actually ridden this entire weekend. From the minute you get on it, you hit the throttle, it goes. It stops very quickly. It handled the corners very well. It had a little bit of lift on the skis, but not too bad that you couldn't control it with your weight. What an engine they have. Same crankshaft they've been using in Snowcross. Remember the ones getting all the hole shots? 2.5 pounds lighter. Doesn't sound like much. That is an incredible amount of weight to reduce out of the crankshaft. It's a combination of your pistons, your rods, your crank. All that takes inertia to get rolling. Two and a half pounds lighter crank, spectacular. This one lays flat, it accelerates hard, takes the small stutter bumps real nice. Big bumps, it, I found myself crashing through a few of them, but you know what? You don't hit the big bumps that hard that often. It was just such a fun sled to ride. For 2015, everybody that rode this one snowmobile all got off of it, we all smiled, and everybody said right away, this is the best groomed trail snowmobile I have ever driven <laughs> anytime, anywhere, including even custom snowmobiles. Still ahead on Sled Ed 24 7. Want a sled that can do it all? Check out the latest crossovers. Now, if you prefer big bumps, you'll appreciate the rough trail sleds. And later, the biggest and baddest are on top of the mountain. Stay tuned to find out which sleds we award best in class for 2015. Sledhead 24 7 is brought to you by Amsoil. The first in synthetics. Polaris, terrain domination. Ram, guts, glory, ram. Fox, redefining ride dynamics. And by Stud Boy, traction with an attitude. This is our crossover segment. Fish, it's one of my favorites because we get to do a little bit of everything. 50% on, 50% off. We don't have high lug tracks. We don't have low lug tracks. We've got the perfect blend of 50-50. At Sledhead 24-7, we do things a little extreme, and that's why we're up in the mountains with this baby. They can go a lot more places, a lot more terrain than the average person thinks. We have one four-stroke in the group, but the rest are 800 two-strokes, so we have plenty of power, right, Shane? I'm actually super excited to ride a four-stroke and compare it to the two-stroke power. We have some good snow up here in the mountains and we're gonna see what they can do off trail. So you know what? Let's go give these things a try. Skidoo Renegade XRS. This is the absolute perfect marriage of short track, longer track, crossover, and it goes through the bumps incredible. You know, out of the box, it's just dialed. It really is. It doesn't, you know, pull super hard and then fall off flat. I mean, it just pulls and pulls and pulls. On trail, this thing is a mogul masher. It has a new Raz2 front end. What's so unique with that is they redesigned it that since the beginning of time in snowmobiles, they have bump steer. And you can just set it up to your personal preference pretty fast, and it's just such a smooth ride. The off trail with the inch and a half track, it worked really well. I mean, I know the back country would work better with a longer track, but I think then I'm gonna, not going to like it as much on the trail through the bumps with a narrower front end. The Articat XF8000 High Country Limited. This machine has a 141 track with a two and a quarter tall paddle. Off trail was a blast. You've got tons of paddle, ton of snow moving ability. It's so easy to side hill. I found hill climbing and side hilling by far that was the easiest. On the trail, this sled, it felt like it was light. The throttle seemed poppy. I thought it was fun. It's more of an aggressive ride. And I think this sled is probably more a 60% off trail and 40% on trail. The Yamaha SR Viper XTX SE, which is special edition. On the trail, runs great. Lays flat in the corners, a little pushy in the front. While it does have good power, it seems like it takes a while to get there. You know, it does pull your arms hard, but you're, it's almost like it's making more noise than it is actually producing power to the ground. 
it's gotten more nimble. Even going down the trail, I could shift my weight and bring a ski up if I wanted to. It's the Cat Pro Climb chassis. It really does work well. It, the only issue I have is I'm finding that when I'm trying to set it into a side hill, it feels a little bit heavier. And what it's causing me to do is pull harder on the handlebars, and, and it's hard to get to that balance point. It definitely had you know, some decent on-trail characteristics, uh, you know, some decent off-trail characteristics. It's a, it's a great snowmobile still, by all means. It just didn't fit the bill for me. The Polaris 800 Switchback Pro X, this thing is a whole new chassis, 38 pounds lighter than our last year's Switchback. Off-trail sled absolutely was a riot to ride. 137 inch track, inch and three quarter power, I believe. It really hooked up nice with the 800 clean fire injection motor. This one I felt the most comfortable on, on trail, because I could get my body more forward. You definitely notice sitting on that chassis that you're more elevated, more in the uh, rider forward position. You're looking for balance. What's the best on the trail and the best off the trail? That, in my opinion, is the ultimate crossover snowmobile for 2015. Coming up next, if you like ditch banging, get fired up as we test ride the rough trail sleds. And later, the biggest and baddest are on top of the mountain. We narrow it down to four machines. Find out what sled we award best in class. Sledhead 24-7 is brought to you by KNN, the world's best air filter. FXR, world-class outerwear. Arctic FX Graphics, make it yours. GoPro, be a hero. Michelob Golden Light, you're golden. And by Skidoo Snowmobiles. You know, on our rough trail segment, all the OEMs want to come with us because they want to come and watch because they can't believe what we put their equipment through. Rough Trail to me is all about hitting the biggest, baddest, gnarliest bumps you can find. Anywhere from just a bunch of little stutter bumps to, you know, three to four foot, just big whooped out bumps. Yamaha SR Viper RTX LE. That is the best Yamaha I've ridden in the bumps to the date. They have that new race suspension with the Fox float Evos on the front and the thing really hits the bumps nice. I like that this sled had that meaty four stroke feel to it with the power. You just kind of sound like a beast going down the trail. The rear suspension is beefier, it's stronger, the geometry is different and you could truly feel it in the bumps. As long as you stay in the gas, that front end and nose is very, very light. I could go over the bumps almost as fast as anything else out there. Some of the big bumps you spin out versus really getting the push that you need to, you know, to land flat on the uphill the next bump. Articat ZR8000RR. It's just made for pawn big bumps, hitting any jumps, hitting any snow-covered obstacle. It just took the small bumps nice, a little chattery in the center shock, pushed a little on the front. I could go into the, you know, to the super big whoops, the three and four footers spaced, you know, uneven and hit them as fast as I felt that my body could take it. And it wasn't too intimidating. I was anxious to get it on some bumps and give it a try. It doesn't feel to me like it pulls as hard as some of the other ones. But at the end of the day, you know, I got to race some of the other sleds and, and it does. It just doesn't feel it in your thumb. And for a long trail ride or a super whooped out section, actually not having that feeling in your thumb is probably a good thing because it's not wearing out on you. You know, it's not wearing your body out. From Polaris, it was the 800 Rush Pro X in the new Axis chassis. The whole snowmobile is new. They use 93% of all new components, at least 7% for fasteners, nuts, bolts, whatever. Everything on it is new. What they've done is create a snowmobile that flies flatter. The most comfortable, just the flat out, you know, you could close your eyes and sit on it and it just feels natural to ride without even looking anywhere. On the long sweeping curves, you can keep her pinned. It has a little bit of ski lift, but it's not gonna throw you. It revs and pulls so hard, so quick. And then it breathes better. It's got different intake ports, different exhaust ports. The engine's lighter. It makes more power than any Polaris 800 ever has before. And to top it off, it gets better fuel mileage. It's so easy to tell which is the best in class. 
And the Skidoo Renegade XRS is truly hands down the best in class. Out of all the snowmobiles I've ever driven for a combination of rough trail, not really groomed trail, big bumps, small bumps, stutter bumps, chatter bumps, off camber, I don't care what bump it is, this thing is amazing. The 800 E-Tech, the R Motion rear, and the new Raz 2 front. The thing flies straight, handles the small bumps. There's no trail chatter whatsoever, and the big bumps are fantastic. Getting to ride something that doesn't have bump steer, you can absolutely 100% feel it. I mean, you can go through chatter bumps and bounce back and forth, and it doesn't matter which ski lands, you're still going in the direction that you're, you know, that you're pointed. The thing railed hard on the groom trail and on the bumps, I felt more comfortable taking at higher speeds than any of the others. And this is why I voted it number one. Up next, we hit the backcountry to evaluate and award the best in class mountain snowmobile for 2015. Stay tuned. Sledhead 24 seven is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Arctic Cat, share our passion. C&A Pro Skis, ride like a pro. Bully Dog, more power, more pull, more bully. Spy, see better, feel better. And by Speedworks, straight up USA horsepower. Normally at Snowshoot, we get to ride one session, one four hour session for mountain riding. This year, we rode three four hour sessions. 12 hours of mountain riding. Choosing the best mountain sled is a lot of work. I mean, because we go out and we ride and we push them and we ride different sessions early in the week, later in the week for condition changes to try to get the best of all conditions to choose the best mountain sled. We got to test in you know, multiple snow conditions this week from four to five inches of fresh snow to today, the latest day that we rode, 18 to 20 inches of fresh snow. And, you know, the, that snow really makes all the difference in the world from every one of the chassis that we rode. And let me tell you, after 12 hours of riding, it's pretty easy to decipher which is the best mountain snowmobile made for 2015. The Polaris 800 Pro RMK 163. What can I say? I mean, that's still one of my favorite sleds. They didn't change a whole lot for this year, but it's not like they really needed to. Claris has got one of the best engines in the 800 Clean Fire, always has been. It's just super fuel efficient, super quiet, and it makes great power all the way through. It's very linear. Uh, you can go downhill and turn and come right back uphill, whereas you can hold a side hill with one arm if you'd like. It feels like a four-stroke. It feels like a four-stroke power without the heaviness. The Polaris Pro RMK is definitely, in my opinion, one of the easiest snowmobiles to step into the mountain segment with. We had the Arctic Cat M6000 and M8000 this year. Two great sleds. This chassis, the only thing that I can really say negative about it is standing over the top of it, it kind of feels chubby to me. With that said, if you can get past that, uh, the handling is great. Uh, you know, vertical steering post is brought back again this year. The skis, the front suspension, the geometry works out really well. The motor on that thing is just great. Quick, easy, responsive. It's a fun sled to drive. In a Proclimb chassis, they change the drive shaft. They change the end of it. They're, they're, everything they're doing is about cutting weight down, making it more efficient, making it more rideable, and making it more enjoyable. It'll turn on a dime. It I was surprised, haven't been on a cat in years, and I swear I could just flip it around. As far as drivability, absolutely easy. Talk about side hilling, lays right on its side. Very easy, we're in the deep snow today. Turn around, carve it, wrong foot forward. You can turn it, shoot right back up the hill. Very good snowmobile. Yamaha SR Viper MTX with the 162. Tell you what, what we had to ride out here were boosted. It's Yamaha's first attempt at the mountain segment in several years. I think they really, you know, went a good direction. Well, they partnered up with Articat to borrow a chassis, and then they put their tried and true motor in it. Climbing up the hill, that pulled us hard, or harder than anything else that we were riding today. And that's compliments to that boost. It was fun. 
Uh, I think that at the end of the day though, most people are still gonna feel the weight. I noticed it would wear me out pretty fast. It's, it's a lot of sled for me, but super fun. It didn't feel heavy towards, until towards the end of the day because the boost wears on you as well. I just think for the average person, uh, you know, it's gonna pull a little bit too hard to ride it super aggressively in the mountains, you know, day in and day out. You know, after 12 hours of riding now, over the course of this week, I've gotten stuck on every snowmobile out there, and I've watched all of our other athletes from Sledhead 24-7 get stuck plenty too. I helped a lot of people get pulled out, a lot of people pulled me out. The one snowmobile I never pulled out and I never got stuck on is the ski -Doo Summit X with T3. That is almost impossible to get stuck. We were happy, you know, to choose this year the Summit X with the T3 package is our mountain machine of the year, our mountain snowmobile of the year. This sled is super exciting for me this year. Kind of one of the most innovative things that we're seeing come from the mountain segment. That three inch track, uh, which is also 16 wide, same standard that's been on the Summit for years now, and three, four foot of powder for what this sled was designed for, I think the 174 would absolutely shine. Anytime you get longer, and wider, so you have a 16-174, you have a flotation that it takes away your errors. You can stop and think. You don't have to be on the fly. Probably the most dialed 800 motor out of the box there is. Team that with a chassis that is super rigid. The running boards evacuate snow very well. I think it's a great combination. This year's Snowshoe 2015 was, in my opinion, in all the years I've been doing it, was the greatest snowshoe I've been to yet. The OEMs brought us such great products. You know, at this point, uh, you know, five days later, the end of Snowshoe, I couldn't be any more happy. You know, I really feel that we really have the entire package. Each person has to ride that sled and evaluate it for us to come down to a consensus. And each night we've come back here and we've taken a vote. One of the great perks at Snowshoe is the OEMs. They take our feedback and they want to better the sleds before these sleds hit the market and ultimately it makes for a great end result for you customers. Hey Sledhead 24-7 fans, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube for the latest episodes, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram and Twitter for the most up-to-date info. And who knows, you might just ride with us this season.